Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to have a chat about the incoming and extremely girthy Codex Eldari. Now I know what you're thinking, how could you describe any codex other than Codex Space Marines as being girthy? Surely that is the one codex out of all of them that has got, it's got the size, it's got the weight, the sheer mass. You know, due to the fact that it's massively bloated and there's 18 bajillion units and some of them pretty much do the same things twice. I'm looking at you, outriders and bikes. I mean, what's the point in having both of you? We just don't know. Actually, there are slight differences, but still, you get what I mean. Well, the thing is... Codex Eldari is also massive. It is a whopping 200 pages long. Like, I'm not just making that up either. Look, right here. It's big. We mean really big. Hello, Editing Kiri here. I fix all of my previous mistakes by chopping them unmercifully out of the timeline. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. That was genuinely awful. I do apologise. Clocking in at 200 pages, it's only 8 pages shorter than Codex Space Marines. Like, that's that's crazy. That's <laughs> that's genuinely a massive book. So there's new army-wide special rule stratagems, all of that stuff. Obviously, I don't know why they've put... I'll be honest, I'm not sure why they've put this. It also contains full rules for using the new Autark, Guardians, Warlocks, and Dark Reapers that we've unveiled over the last few... Well, you'd assume so, and given that those are just redesigns of existing kits, how much are those rules going to change necessarily just because the kit is new? I mean, there's going to be maybe a few things that's different, yeah, but like... I that feels like a given to me. I'd be surprised if it wasn't in there. Um, as well as rules for the Azurani Eldar, Craft Worlds, and notice I immediately slipped back into saying Eldar there. <laughs> I didn't say Eldari, I said Eldar because, I, you know, habits of a lifetime. They die hard, don't they? New Codex also has rules for fielding Harlequins. So that's cool. Harlequins are, are like, it looks like they're fielded into this Codex. Um, and also they have pointed out that the new Corsairs, one of which we've seen, I really thought they'd show that off, like, before they talked about the codex but they haven't um you can also include them in an army as well and you've got the option to take an inari army as well i mean it, i i have to admit have to admit when there was all the stuff about the leaks and the big leaks and them folding a bunch of stuff into the codex i was i was somewhat skeptical of the idea that they would fold in everything that wasn't dark eldar into the book although i did see people say they were going to fold dark eldar in as well and that just seemed mad to me and it looks like they haven't done that. But I am genuinely surprised that they've decided to fold everything else in. But at the same time, I'm glad that they have. I, I, I genuinely am. I mean, if it means that they've remembered Inari exists in the first place, then surely that by itself is something of a bonus, is it not? So they've also essentially confirmed that we've got Tyranids on the way as well. Something gribbly and chitinous coming. This is interesting, right, this artwork. That is a... that's the Hierophant. That's the massive Bio-Titan for the Tyranids that's in the background there. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'm struggling to think of how many bits of promotional artwork we've seen that have got, like, just full-on Forge World units in them. Like, outside of promoting specifically Forge World stuff, I can't think of one that we've seen, at least recently, where there's been a massive Forge World model in the background of the, of the, of the picture. Now, it could be that there's actually plenty, and I just can't remember them, and I've not been keeping track properly, but that just stands out to me as being kind of unusual seeing that lad up there. It is a solid model. Massive, but solid. So, on the subject of this Codex, and of the Harlequins, this is really cool. I like this a lot. So, the new Codex will let you bring a Harlequin troop with your battle-forged armies. And I really like this, because this is the thing where they're doing that nice that nice approach where they actually allow you to have fun and mix in different thematic parts of armies and actually make it not a massive hassle and it doesn't penalise you for doing something that you could do a really cool themed army around. So, as they say, the fickle Harlequins are devotees of the Laughing God and this new codex includes all the rules you need to field an exclusively Harlequin army for the deadly stance of in galactic history, etc, etc. But they're not just limited to solo performances. A mask will often caper from the webway unannounced to Eldar Eldari cousins before evaporating once again. 
these Fairweather allies are known as traveling players. Now, I really like this because it enables you to build a cool, interesting, fun thematic list, and it doesn't punish you for it. It doesn't say, well, you shouldn't have Harlequins with this army, so you can't have it. It's just going to mess up all these special rules. They've actually made it so that it circumvents those rules and allows you to do it. So, traveling players, if your army is Battleforged, one Harlequins patrol detachment in your army can have this ability. The detachment with this ability is ignored for any mission pack rule rules that require every unit in your army to have at least one faction keyword in common. This means that you can, for example, include one Harlequin's patrol detachment as part of an Azriani or Drakari army. That's rad, yes. Harlequin's units within such a detachment are excluded when determining your army faction and when determining if every unit in your army has a certain keyword or ability. For example, such units do not prevent other Azriani units from your army using rules such as Strands of Fate, and it does not prevent other Drakari units from your army from using such rules as Power from Pain. Likewise, such units do not prevent you from using Azurani or Drakari chapter approved rules, e.g. secondary objectives, provided all other units in your army have the appropriate keyword. And as they say, it neatly sidesteps the constraints of mission packs. It just means you can add a detachment of Harlequins to any Eldari army, and I love that. I genuinely do. I think that's really, really cool because it lets you make those fun and interesting and thematic lists. You can build an army around the idea of this and it's not going to wreck you for it. This is what I love to see and I want to see more of this sort of thing. Between this and then making the new Autark completely compatible with the old Autark, that's the stuff that I love to see. And as they say, yeah, they can make a cameo in Eldari armies of both the smooth and spiky varieties. What a way to phrase that. So, rules open up a whole barrel of laughs for your army. On top of the mandatory troops and HQ choices, a patrol detachment has two slots each for elite fast attack and heavy support units. So you can start throwing Skyweavers, Voidweavers, Death Jesters, and even a Solitaire into the mix. Travelling players will allow anyone with existing Harlequin armies to supplement them with more straightforward Azurani or Drakari forces. Uh, yeah, I, I can't get enough of this stuff. I cannot get enough of this stuff. Something that we tend to bang on about around here is the idea of giving players more choice and allowing players to pick things that may not even be all that good, may not be that competitively strong or whatever, but allows them to field the army that they want to field without penalising them for it, and allows them to play games with armies that are built around a central idea without being punished because they step outside of like the, like the bounds of, I mean, the rules, but in some cases, the rules kind of constrict what should be open to the player's imagination. This is a great example of looking at what people could do if they wanted to make something fun and interesting and going, actually, yeah, no, you should be able to do that. that that's good. We'll allow that. I want to see more of this sort of thing. I like the idea of there being stuff that are literally exceptions to the rules. I mean, we've got the limitation on flyers at the moment. It would be really cool if there was some sort of Militarum Tempestus um, like change which allowed you to take more than the currently allowed number of flyers so you could do fluffy drop lists. They may not even be that good, they may not even win that many games or be that strong, but it would be very appropriate for that sort of army and having that exception just makes it possible to do more stuff and do more things that you want to do and feel the armies that you want to make and the more support is placed in for that, I mean the happier I'm going to be every single time. I mean, so far it looks like the Eldar launch is going to be really good. They've done a really good job refreshing the models, they've brought everything up to date. I know the new Morgan Ra is not to everyone's taste, although, you know, I'd, I love me a little... I was going to say... No, I'm not going to... I'm not going to say that out loud, because that could be taken very weirdly, no matter what I do. I quite like him, but I can see why many people do not. But overall, I mean, I think they're doing a good job refreshing everything, and stuff like this, allowing you to do something a little bit different, allowing you to actually bring in the Harlequins as like a, an extra bit of fleeting force in your army. That's cool and good, and I would love to see more of it as we get into more Codex releases for this edition. I just don't think there's a downside to this. It just looks kind of fun. The question is, what do you think? Good idea? Bad idea? Something that you really like the idea of? Something you'd like to see implemented more for other factions as well? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things. Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you'd like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>